through media and also trying to discredit those of us like me and Vadana Shiva and others claiming that we are anti-science and uncredible. So they're actually cornered against the wall. And in discussions with my colleagues around the world, it's clear that they're doing a full court press. I'm here in Ecuador, where the country actually has a constitutional amendment saying that no GMOs are allowed. If you look at WikiLeaks, the United States government had a plan to undermine the constitution here and get them to overturn it. So they actually paid for bringing reporters from Ecuador to the United States so that Monsanto can train them how to report on GMOs. And sure enough, they started giving Monsanto's false talking points in the press here in Ecuador. Then they surrounded the president, who does have the ability to overturn the constitutional prohibition. And he came out saying that GMOs could increase yields by 400 percent. And he's now against the constitutional provision. It turns out GMOs actually do not increase yields at all. In fact, many times decrease yields. But agroecology, which was recommended by the world's experts, that increases yields, which he's ignoring. So they're focusing on the four targeted areas, politicians, media, the general public and farmers, and trying to use as much evidence as they can, which is false, to try and convince them that this is absolutely necessary to feed the world, to save economies, to prevent the use of agricultural chemicals, all of which has been Sure, but the effects of it are so deadly. We're 30 years into this nightmare that no amount of BS is ever going to paper over the prima facie reality. Well, I'll talk about it in the next segment about the specific diseases that we now know are probably linked to GMOs. I'll say probably, but I'm very confident as thousands of physicians in the United States who are prescribing non-GMO diets, they are very confident that these particular diseases are linked. And why it's so important now not to, not to just buy non-GMO, but to buy organic, because Monsanto's glyphosate or Roundup is sprayed on wheat, barley, lentils, sweet potatoes, potatoes, sugarcane. Over 100 different crops are now authorized to have high levels of glyphosate residue, and it's sprayed just before sure. harvest as a ripening agent. Briefly describe in one minute what, why glyphosate, I mean, they admit it grows breast cancer. Why is it so deadly? Well, I can do it in one minute, but we should spend a little more time. It's, it's, noted, it's definitely a probable carcinogen according to the World Health Organization. It's linked to birth defects. It's an antibiotic that kills the beneficial gut bacteria. It causes an overgrowth of negative gut bacteria. It blocks the gut bacteria's ability to produce tryptophan, which is a precursor to serotonin and melatonin, so it can affect mood, behavior, sleep, uh, uh, blood sugar chemistry, as well as um, obesity. It also is linked to an endocrine disruptor. It also blocks the, the liver's ability to detoxify. Uh, stay there. I want you to recap all that when we come back. And I'm sure it's all an accident that these eugenicists that gave us all this other bad stuff at Monsanto came up with this. I'm sure it's all an accident. We'll be right back. We're on the march. Read about it in None Dare Call a Conspiracy, published in 1972, two years before I was born. And then I read None Dare, uh, after I read None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, whose son runs and founded Politico today, uh, the late, great Gary Allen, I, I went and I read the books they recommended that they were quoting from, Tragedy and Hope, uh, The Anglo-American Establishment, both by Carol Quigley, um, other books like The um, Technotronic Era by Zbigniew Brzezinski, and others. And you read those, and they explain everything. From their perspective. So you need to understand, uh, this is about fighting a global monopoly. We're going back to our guest. But I'm going to give the floor uh, right through this long segment so you can really break down what we know glyphosate's doing. And he's a major target, so he puts provisos in there. That's a whole other story here. Because Monsanto went after farmers, researchers, scientists, persecuted people. I've had top genetic engineers on the show that were making millions a year who even own percentages. I've had a bunch of them on uh, in and new potatoes that were coming out and new corn. And they would say, hey, this is sterilizing the rats. So this is killing the guinea pigs. And they'd say, shut up or you're fired. So there's been a war, a long history of persecution that I hope our guest can talk about maybe in the next segment before he leaves us and before Percy Smizer, a true hero, joins us because they've gone through hell to bring us to where we're now here. Kind of like they... I think manipulated the vote in California and other states to not let GMO labeling happen. But the fight educated everybody, so it even blew up bigger. See, George Washington lost almost all the first battles for the first five years of the war. Then began to win the battles the last year and a half. But every time they w lost a battle, 
they still escape with enough of a force to reconstitute to wear out the juggernaut. So it's perseverance, ladies and gentlemen, that wins. That's why if I get destroyed, I get set up, I get you know brought down, believe me, I get plenty of threats. We're in the zeitgeist. We're not touching it. We're in it. Doesn't matter because I know the war will be won. And it's not some heroic reason I'm doing that. It's self-preservation for the species. I really do. I'm an individual. But when you become a real individual, you then understand the collective. They try to bring a collective that you submit to and give up your individualism. No. We as individuals gravitate to what, what's the core of the human spirit, the human drive. And then we collectively radiate those ideas and actions and then build a harmonistic collective. But the collective comes out of the individual not out of the collective. And that's my own philosophy and my own ideas, but I know it's true. And so I am the planet. I am the people. You are the people. We are, we are this species. And, and we have to decide that we care about everybody. But that doesn't mean then being told, oh, do this to show your moral. You've got to go do research to really follow the right path to really help people. You can't just give away your free will to the false corporate collective that it tells you is moral. I'm ranting now. Uh, briefly, we're running two specials right now, Powerful Concentrated Herbs. We have InfoWarsLife.com. We're going to launch this through next week, 20% off Super Male Vitality, 20% off Super Female Vitality. Uh, these are just a whole bunch of concentrated herbs of the highest quality. You've heard the rave reviews, known to just really supercharge the body, the libido, the energy, you name it. Uh, it's what I've been taking. Prostagard is 10 different saw palmetto, organic, and, and other things known to really help the prostate and, and, and other functions uh, that are connected to that. Uh, everybody knows this. I even showed you in a Mayo Clinic articles yesterday. This is one of the most documented things, and it's got concentrated, strong, organic saw palmetto. It's got a bunch of other things that are absolutely known, absolutely known to turbocharge uh, that same, same activity. Vitamin D, zinc, selenium, copper, manganese, uh, chromium, uh, and a bunch of other uh, ingredients. Saw palmetto, lycopene, uh, the healthy plant sterols. Uh, this is the super formula, over 40 bucks from medical doctor. I was getting something similar from, you know, in, in his practice. He said, you're 40, you know, get on this you know, about two years ago. So I said, why not develop our own supercharged version? It's out, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or 888 Two five three three one three nine, and thank you for your prayers and support. And I was saying it wrong earlier. Uh, it's uh, responsibletechnology.org, uh, not not com. Responsibletechnology.org, uh, non-GMO shoppingguide.com, and seedsofdeception.com. Jeffrey Smith at the tip of the spear. So 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 get into what it's doing to us, where the rest of the fight's going, and 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 then people need to realize those that have gone through hell. Uh, to stand up and tell the truth, and thank God it's not in vain because we can save millions of lives if we uh, go ahead and finally uh, discredit this uh, deadly chemical. Go ahead, uh, Jeffrey Smith. Great. Thank you. I'll talk about Roundup. I also want to talk about the new apple and potato before we break with a new technology that may be far worse than anything we've seen. Now, Roundup, or glyphosate, its active ingredient, was originally patented as a descaler to clean industrial boilers and pipes. That's because it chelates or grabs minerals, all sorts of minerals, all the metallic minerals, zinc, uh, uh, chromium, magnesium, manganese, calcium, all of those. Now, when they discarded the uh, glyphosate on the ground, it killed the plants. And so Monsanto patented it as an herbicide. Now, it turns out that it can de deplete the minerals in the crops and the animals in the United States eat mostly Roundup Ready crops. So the animals in the United States, the livestock, have a universal deficiency of certain minerals like manganese, according to the veterinarians that send in organs for evaluation. So we're eating weak and sick mineral deficient plants, weak and sick mineral deficient animals, and residues of Roundup that further chelate or bind with our minerals, making them unavailable. Mineral depletion is linked to a whole host of diseases. Now, because it blocks certain minerals, it's also an antibiotic, but it's selective. It kills the beneficial gut bacteria, the lactobacillus, the bifidus, the stuff we pay for, but not the negative stuff like botulism and salmonella and E. coli, 
which can cause an overgrowth of the negative gut bacteria. This alone can create holes in the intestinal walls called permeable gut or leaky gut, and that's linked to cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, autism, uh, food allergies, inflammation, and autoimmune disease, to name a few. Now, some of our gut bacteria is used to produce what's called aromatic amino acids, including tryptophan, which is necessary for the production of serotonin. Serotonin is a good thing. And if we don't have enough serotonin, we may not be happy, we may be depressed, sad, etc. It also regulates our blood sugar. It also regulates our ability to say, I'm full, I can stop eating. So if we have a deficiency of serotonin because Roundup is blocking the production of tryptophan, that could cause a whole effect in terms of mood behavior and health. It also affects the melatonin, which relates to sleep. In addition, it blocks another pathway in our liver that helps detox. So that means all of the other poisons that we're exposed to may become amplified because the ability to detox through the liver is hampered. It also is an endocrine disruption at very, very tiny levels, at parts per trillion, at parts of the amount of glyphosate that's currently in our water supply. Now, it can change the balance of estrogen and testosterone. Rats that were fed Roundup in the water supply, which was less than the amount allowed in the United States, the females had more testosterone and lower estrogen. The males had more estrogen and lower testosterone. And it can also affect the aromatase. And what do we see here? We see, and it's just a fact, they admit this, butch, more butch women, bigger women. Uh, and I'm not attacking what's been done to them with the chemicals. It's just a fact. And more effeminate men. Uh, lower sperm counts. Lower testosterone. Uh, metrosexual activity. And, and, and again, the media always spins this like I'm bashing people for their sexual preference. We don't even get into that, folks. It's a fact that in mammals, but also in the runoff from fish, you name it, that this stuff's happening. You look at Prozac runoff, uh, and it's causing the fish to commit suicide, literally swimming up to birds, not afraid. Uh, it's causing risky behavior. I mean, we are just bathed in this garbage. I know I'm digressing off into other chemicals, but uh, we know this is happening. In addition to causing endocrine disruption, it also can affect the ability of the sperm to, to move because manganese, which is chelated by glyphosate, is needed for sperm mobility. In fact, when they fed genetically modified soy to female rats starting two weeks before they got pregnant, more than half of their babies died within three weeks compared to 10% of controls. For hamsters that were fed Roundup Ready soy, which is sprayed with Roundup, by the third generation, most were sterile, some had hair growing in their mouths, and they died at four or five times the rate. Now, birth defects are also linked to glyphosate big time, both in animals and in the human population in places like Argentina, where they spray, or spray a lot of that. Roundup also damages the mitochondria, which means that we may get tired, and there's a lot of diseases that can link to that. It also is, as we say, a promoter of tumors, and you saw on the screen just now some very, very large tumors of rats. This was a study done by Seralini and others in Europe where they fed Roundup-ready corn to rats for two years. Now, they were, the rats ended up dying at higher rates and earlier. They had damage to their liver, kidneys, and pituitary, and they also had multiple massive tumors. Now, they didn't know whether it was the Roundup or the GMO that caused the problem. So as part of the study, they fed Roundup-ready corn that had not been sprayed with Roundup, and that group had multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. And to another group, they fed the Roundup without the corn, and that group also had multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. So the Roundup was so, worse than the GMO? Well, actually, no, both. It, they both contain the same outcome. Early death, wow. organ damage, and multiple so massive tumors. So what's worse? It's hard to know, but I, we've tracked in the epidemiological uh, uh, trends what is related to the increase of GMOs or what's related to the increase of Roundup. The list of diseases is astonishing. Deaths from stroke, deaths from senile dementia, deaths from obesity, deaths from high blood pressure, deaths from intestinal And by the way, we infection. see all that going up. I mean, every week I hear about some 25-year-old woman or 30-year-old guy who just dies of a stroke. Uh, it's just crazy. 
And I talk to thousands of people who say when they get off of GMOs, they get better from a lot of these same diseases and disorders. In fact, thousands of doctors are prescribing to people to stop eating GMOs. I speak at those medical conferences and they tell me people are getting, from these, getting better from these same diseases and disorders, the same ones that afflict the lab animals that are